In the NFL, there is never a shortage of what are known as homer takes. Well, when it comes to the NFL, perhaps nobody has a bigger stake in this than Adam Rank, who has got some of the wildest predictions when it comes to every single year. And boy, does his predictions take the cake this year when we're talking about the NFC North. Stay tuned, everybody. It's about to get interesting. What are we? What makes us what we are and what we're going to be? It's grit. It's what we started with last year, guys. Doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes, I will beat your ass. Can definitely compete with with, with the big dogs. Ten, five, end zone, touchdown, Detroit Lions. You guys, you guys are unbelievable, man. I, I'm telling you. We are driven by Detroit. Hello, Detroit Lions fans, and welcome on back to yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike. And as always, we're diving on in. So, <laughs> here's the thing, folks. I'm just going to state this right now. I understand the life of a fan. I understand what being a fan of a team is. Again, fan. It derives itself from the root word of fanatic. I understand what that word means. But, again, I've said this before. There is a point where fanaticism even goes past what you could realistically understand. Because for me, I understand that, you know, certain fans are going to have certain opinions about their teams. They're going to be like, oh, this is our year. We're going to get it. Whatever. I get that. But let's be honest and let's be reasonable with ourselves here. No matter how much a certain fan base might want to think, oh, yes, this is our year. It's like, let's step back and take a look at the situation logically for what it is. You aren't going to go anywhere this year. Maybe in a year, maybe two. But you aren't going anywhere this year. And perhaps no fan base right now has got this delusion more ingrained into their psyche, into their belief system, than the damn Chicago Bears. I swear, ever since draft night, the Chicago Bears have absolutely just been like, oh yeah, we're going to freaking win the NFC North. Oh yeah, we're going to go to the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, everything's going to turn around for us. We're going to just kick everybody's ass and we're not looking back. Okay, fine. You guys are entitled to your opinions. You guys are entitled to your beliefs. But let me tell you something. When the world comes crashing down and when you're burning at the end of the season, don't be surprised if everybody and their brother again tells you, I told you so. Because I get, again, the Bears, they are looking for something. They are wanting to be successful. I get that. They've been, they haven't had a really successful team for quite a while. So I get that as a Lions fan because you know what? We didn't have a successful team for a very damn long while. So I get the desire. I get that inherent need that that's something you have to have. But let's understand something here. It's not going to happen. I don't care if you drafted Caleb Williams. I don't care if you traded for Keenan Allen. I don't care if you have DJ Moore, Cole Komet, or anybody else. You're not just going to all of a sudden just magically overnight, oh, as soon as, you know, freaking everything falls into place, everything's going to go your way. This isn't fairy tales. This isn't freaking, oh, hey, you know what? We've got your fairy godmother over here, and all we got to do is sprinkle some fairy dust on you, and poof, everything comes magically alive for you. That's not how it works. So when I hear probably the biggest Bears homer of them all, Adam Rank, pull out his predictions for this year, I had to pay attention. Now, obviously, I wanted to wait until all the predictions were out. But when I actually looked at the predictions and I actually took a look at what he was saying within the predictions, it's just like, dude, it's like you once again just, I don't understand how Adam Rank has a job. I really don't. Because some of his predictions are just ridiculous. When you take a look at the predictions that he put up for this year, for the NFC North, because I don't really give a damn about the rest of the NFL. I just care about the NFC North for right now. When you take a look at what he predicted for the NFC North, the number one seed that he has for the NFC North, obviously, is the damn Bears. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! <laughs> But the record he gives them is a 12-5 overall record with a 4-2 division record. I'm sorry, but there is no way in hell or heaven on earth that that is going to happen. There is no way the Bears are winning 12 games. I don't care. I would bet my bottom dollar they are not winning 12 games. 
They will be lucky if they win seven. There's no way they're winning 12. And winning four out of six division matchups? No, they might win three of them if they're lucky. But let's continue to go down this gravy train. The team after the Bears that Rank has as the second team in the NFC North division is the Detroit Lions. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! So obviously he gives us some credit. But again, what's our record? He gives us a 10-7 overall record with a 2-4 division record. The worst division record actually in the NFC North because the other two teams have a better division record than we do, according to Adam Rank. But what I find funny about this is that somehow, even though our team got better than last year's team, somehow, despite the fact that we are returning virtually all of our starters... We somehow are going to lose two more games in comparison. And oh, by the way, those extra two games are going to most likely come from the fact that both times we lost to the Bears according to his schedule. No, sir. Not going to happen. Then we get to the third team in his little, you know, criteria, which is the Packers. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! <laughs> He has the Packers going 9-8, and eight, just like they did last year, and he gives them a 3-3 three and three division record. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm not a fan of the Packers at all, but the Packers are a team that is substantially better, in my opinion, than the Bears. So again, the fact that he has the Packers, in essence, doing the exact same thing they did last year, despite the fact that they are going to be much more experienced, they're returning much of their same starters, I, again, I don't understand the logic in that. I can understand that, you know, it's division rivalry and all this nonsense, but it's like, dude, let's take a look at this logically here. The Packers are well out in front in comparison to the Bears. But yet again, Adam Rank, being who he is, does not care. And then finally, he has the Vikings. The Vikings are probably the only one on his list I can actually agree with. And he has the Vikings going 7-10 and 10 with a 3-3 three and three division record. I don't necessarily agree with the division record, but the overall record? Yeah, I can go along with that. I think the Vikings are only going to win about 6 or 7 games this year because let's just call it for what it is. Do they have talent on their team? Oh, hell yeah, of course they do. But you have a very, very murky situation at quarterback because it's like, okay, who's going to start? Is it going to be Sam Darnold until, you know, J.J. McCarthy's ready to go over and, you know, take the job from him? Or are they just going to throw J.J. McCarthy out there straight to the Wolves and just hope for the best? You don't know. But again, there's a lot of question marks for the Vikings, and the Vikings are probably in the most unsettling position out of all the teams in the NFC North. So the only team overall record that I agree with when it comes to rank is the Vikings because I don't see the Vikings having a winning record this year. I don't see them having a good record at all for at least a year or two. But again, this is Adam Rank. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this as respectfully as I can. I get that he's a Bears fan and he's going to obviously give every freaking, you know, positive bonus he can to any team that is for the Bears. Any schedule. I get that. But for crying out loud, his track record with the Bears, oh my lord, it is something to behold. I had to go back. I checked the last four years of his predictions for his Bears. I put, I'm going to put this up on the screen and trust me, this is an eyesore. In 2020, he predicted the Bears would go 10 and 6. In 2021, he predicted they'd go 9 and 8. In 2022, he predicted they'd go 10 and 7. And last year, he predicted they would do the exact same thing he's predicting they're going to do this year, go 12 and 5. You want to know the reality of those years? 2020, they went 8 and 8. 2021, they went 6 and 11. 2022, they went 3 and 14. And last year, obviously, they went 7 and 10. The overall records that he has predicted versus the reality of the situation are almost mere opposites. If Brank would have been correct with all of his predictions, the Bears would have gone 41 and 26 over the last four years. But the reality is they've only gone 24 and 43. That right there just shows how bad his prediction system is. He has absolutely no objectivity when it comes to the Bears. Now, when it comes to the Lions, I understand that I'm a fan, and I understand that for some people that are probably going to watch this, especially Bears fans, if any of them watch it, they're going to be like, oh, well, you can't talk because you have no objectivity when it comes to your team. That's not true at all. 
When I took a look at the team last year, I was like, yeah, the Lions are probably going to go 11 or 12 wins because it was like, hey, we're the best team in the NFC North division. And going into this year, we're still the best team in the NFC North division. Now, I'm not saying it's like by a wide mile like it was last year, but it's like the Lions are team number one. Team number two is the Packers. And then team number three is the Bears. And team number four is the Vikings. Everybody in their brother, for the most part, has got that opinion. You might have a squirrel or, <laughs> you might have a squirrely person out there every now and then like Adam Rank who's going to throw something completely opposite of what is considered, you know, stand the, the the normal logic, the normal, you know, opinion of the situation. But it's like, dude, the Lions are the second best team in the NFC from last year because they lost to the San Francisco 49ers. And let's call for what it is. No other team really in the NFC North made enough gains to pick up to where the freaking Lions are right now to really challenge them for that number two spot. Oh, sure, there are going to be people that think they are, but let's call it for what it is. The Lions and the 49ers, they're the cream of the crop when it comes to the NFC. You might want to talk about maybe the Eagles. You might want to talk about the Cowboys. You might want to talk about the Rams. But let's just call it for what it is when we talk about those teams. The Cowboys, perpetual chokers in the playoffs. I'm not worried about them at all. And we should have beaten them last year if not for Brad Allen's cheating butt. Okay, let's talk about the Eagles. Hmm, the Eagles, let's see. What did they do last year? They got out to a hot start and then they whimpered their way into the playoffs and then were embarrassed by the Bucks. Okay, not exactly going to exhibit a lot of confidence in them. And then let's take a look at the Rams. The Rams actually have a pretty talented team, not going to lie. But the problem with the Rams is they're starting over virtually fresh on defense. All of the guys that they had when they were one of the Super Bowl contending teams, all their guys are gone. Aaron Donald, retired. Jalen Ramsey, gone. All those big name stars they had on defense for all those years, they're gone. They're starting completely over, completely fresh on defense. Even in terms of the fact that they got a new defensive coordinator because Raheem Morris went out and became the new head coach for the Falcons. And then, on top of that, I get you guys still have Stafford. Love Stafford. Not going to say anything negative about him. But he ain't getting any younger. And he's got an injury list that's a, that's a freaking mile long. So it's like, realistically, when I take a look at the NFC, it's the Lions and the 49ers. They're the teams to beat in the NFC. And realistically... The 49ers, they're having problems right now because they've got one wide receiver that's wanting out of there, and they're having a hard time trying to maintain their roster. The Lions right now, they've got all systems go. They don't have any such problems. Everybody on their team is totally fine and happy, and everybody's looking forward to the season. But when you take a look at the rest of the NFC, especially in the North, nobody really stacks up very well against the Lions as far as overall roster talent. You take a look at our roster, there are very, very few weaknesses, actual quantifiable weaknesses that you can point out. The only weaknesses that I as a team member, as a, as a fan right now can realistically point out is we don't really have an opposite edge rusher of Hutchinson, and on top of that, our cornerback room, while improved, is still on the young side. Other than that, we're pretty well set. We've got a great quarterback. We have a great tandem of running backs. We have the best offensive line in the business. We have a good wide receiver core. The only other area that you might want to call a question mark is the kicking position, but I'm pretty confident Jake Bates is going to win that job. My whole point is this. Again, I understand homer takes. I really do. Because, again, you, you want desperately for your team to win. You want desperately for your team to prove the doubters wrong. I get that. But for Adam Rank to think his team's going to go 12-5, and five, there's absolutely no chance of that. I don't care if a freaking miracle falls out of the sky and lands in the Chicago Bears stadium. It's not going to happen. The Bears, they're dealing with a rookie quarterback. They're dealing in one of the toughest divisions in football. And they got to go up against the Lions and the Packers t freaking twice, both of us. So that's four games right there. Um, I'm sorry. You got a lot of competition. You still haven't caught up to us yet. So just thinking that, oh, we drafted the number one, you know, player out of the draft that somehow that's going to get us up to the promised land. I'm going to tell you this right now. There have been plenty of quarterbacks that were drafted in the first round that wound up being bust and they were called the next biggest thing in the world, such as the Ryan Leafs, such as the Jamarcus Russells. I'm just saying, you don't want to just go out and say, oh, just because we drafted the best quarterback, quote-unquote, in the draft, that somehow that means we're going to win. I have seen more than my fair share of quarterbacks that were, that were heralded as the next big thing completely flame out of the NFL and were bust within a couple of years. 
All I'm trying to simply say is this. Adam Rank, I get what he does. I understand who he is. But at some point, you have to be able to step back and be objective when you're talking about record predictions. If you're going to go out there and you're going to say that the worst team or one of the worst teams in football is all of a sudden going to win freaking 12, 13 games, ain't nobody going to take you seriously. It'd be almost like Adam Rank went out there and said that the freaking Carolina Panthers were going to win 13 games and be the number one seed in the NFC. Everybody would look at him like he was crazy. Same thing if he said the same thing for the Patriots on the opposite end of the ball. Ain't nobody thinking the Patriots are going to do well. But that's exactly what he's doing with the Bears. The only excuse or the only grace he's getting out of it is that, well, oh, Adam Rank is a Bears fan, so we can understand why he's saying that. But everybody else is looking at it like, dude, there's no chance of this happening. And that's part of my problem is that it's like, listen, I know as a Lions fan, I give my team a lot of grace. I give my team a lot of benefit of the doubt. But it's like, dude, I take a look at the team and everybody else is looking at my team. We all know that the Lions are going to do well. We all know the Lions are going to win because they did it last year and they're bringing pretty much the exact same pieces plus better pieces into this year. The Bears, yeah, you got a different quarterback. Yeah, you've got an improved receiving core. But you want to know what you don't have? You don't have an improved offensive line. In fact, your offensive line is pretty much the exact same as it was last year. And oh, by the way, where did that get you? Justin Fields was one of the most sacked quarterbacks in the league last year. And I can tell you this right now, while Caleb Williams is a better passer than Justin Fields, he's not as athletic as him. And Justin Fields was running for his life. And we know Justin Fields is one of the fastest quarterbacks in the NFL south of just Lamar Jackson. So let me ask you this, Bears fan. If your offensive line can't protect your quarterback, what good does it do you to have a quarterback that can throw and all these wide receivers to throw to? It doesn't mean jack crap. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. I cannot wait for Bears fans to get the ultimate wake-up call because I'm telling you this right now, it's going to happen multiple times this year. Like I'm saying, my prediction for the Bears, they're probably going to win six or seven games. That's, that's what I reasonably expect them to win, which considering the fact that that's what they did last year and they're having a rookie quarterback come in this year, even if it is Caleb Williams, I consider that to be a little bit graceful on my part because rookie quarterbacks don't typically do very well. Because everybody's saying, that, oh, well, if C.J. Stroud did it last year with the Texans, somehow Caleb Williams is going to do it with the Bears. Um, no chance, friend. No chance in hell of that happening. First and foremost, C.J. Stroud was in a much weaker division than what the NFC North is. Furthermore, let's also just call for what it is. Caleb Williams is coming in with a lot of fanfare, so there's a lot of pressure and expectation already on him. Nobody was really expecting a whole lot out of C.J. Stroud because they just looked at the team and was like, well, we're just trying to get through this season. We're trying to get ourselves better and, you know, in a better position for next year. The fact that the Texans actually were good and, you know, actually played very well for their first year with C.J. Stroud and with their new head coach, that caught everyone by surprise. There's no real surprises that the Bears are going to throw on anybody. They still have the same team for the most part that they had last year, except for a couple, you know, important additions like Keenan Allen, Caleb Williams, and DeAndre, DeAndre Swift, like I said. But they still have the same head coach. They still have the same offensive coordinator. They still have all of the stuff that they pretty much had last year, and nothing is really going to change, in my opinion, from that. That's why I'm saying... When I take a look at Adam Rank's pr predictions and I take a look at all these loony Bears fans that think, hey, you know what, we're going to just take over the NFC North, it's like, keep chirping, keep flapping your gums, because when it comes time for you to actually, you know, put the, put the metal to the pedal and put rubber to road, we're going to see who's actually good. We're going to see who's actually going to be able to play with the big dogs. And the Bears, you're not going to be able to play. You're, you are not there yet. No chance in hell. But... Anyway, I've gone on my rant. I've had my fun. So I'm going to end the episode and say thank you all for watching in another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage you all to watch the next episode. If you're a Bears fan, I expect you didn't enjoy this, but I don't give a damn. If you, and by chance, also enjoyed the content, I hope you all to please subscribe to the channel. If you subscribed in the past and forgot to do so at the time, or you just subscribed and you not had a chance to do so, again, highly encourage you all to subscribe. But... I also want to encourage y'all, please, make sure you hit that bell notification icon at the bottom so that way you guys never miss any more content that I push out. Also encourage y'all to share the content with your Lions friends and family members. Share it here on YouTube, share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, share it anywhere and everywhere you can with everybody and anybody that you can. And with that, folks, I hope you all got something in your life that makes you happy. I hope you all are enjoying this weekend. I hope you all are just having an absolutely fantastic, blessed day. And with that, I also hope you enjoyed the content. God bless, and until the next time we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode.